So in this video, we are going to be talking about bond line structures, um, what that means, and how to draw them. So the reason that we use bond line structures are that they are simpler to draw and simpler to read than Lewis structures. You can see on the left here we have the Lewis structure of amoxicillin, um, and then on the right we have the exact same molecule, but it's just a little bit easier to look at. So how to read a bond line structure. Um, they are represented in a zigzag format where each endpoint and corner represents a carbon atom. So you can see right here, here's an endpoint, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons. So each carbon atom is assumed to have enough hydrogens to achieve 4 bonds per carbon. So for example, if we look at this carbon right here, we know that it is connected to another carbon, so that would be one bond. So we know that it's going to have three hydrogens attached because it needs to achieve its four bonds. So each one of these is going to be a hydrogen. And it's going to be the same for every single carbon. So for this one, it has two bonds connected to other carbons, so it would have two hydrogens attached to it. Um, and same thing over here. This one has a double bond, and so it has one, two, three bonds, so it would have one hydrogen attached to it. So the lone pairs may be drawn, but they're also usually assumed, and especially for carbon atoms, um, you usually don't need to draw in lone pairs, but sometimes it will be necessary. And then I made a note over here for sp hybridized orbitals, um, or simply triple bonds, they are drawn in a straight manner because of their molecular geometry. So for this one, we can go ahead and go through this. It has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So you have to count a carbon on each side of that triple bond. Um, and then for this carbon right here, it has no hydrogens because it has one, two, three, four bonds already. So practice, um, pause the video and see if you can count the number of carbon atoms and how many hydrogens each carbon has. Um, the answers are just going to be the total number of carbons and total number of hydrogens in the entire molecule. So go ahead and pause um, and then see if you get those right. So here are the answers. Um, these are all in the book as well. So if you're having trouble with this, I would go ahead and read through that and see if you can work through some more problems. So here are the steps to drawing bond line structures. Um, the first step is that we are going to delete all hydrogens unless it's connected to a heteroatom. And a heteroatom is going to be any atom that is not a carbon. So this oxygen right here and this nitrogen right here are the heteroatoms of this molecule. So I went ahead and did that and deleted all of the hydrogens except for this one connected to the nitrogen. And then the next step is going to be to draw the carbon, the carbons and the heteroatoms in a zigzag format um, unless it is a sp hybridized bond like we talked about earlier. That would not be drawn in a zigzag form. So there we go, it's the exact same as up here, it's just drawn in this structure. And then next we are going to delete the carbon atoms and just leave the, the bonds that are between them. So here we have our bond line structure. So practice, um, go ahead again, pause the video, and then see if you can draw the bond line structure of these two molecules. So here are the answers. Um, you can see this has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So this is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Um, the double bond stays exactly how it is. And then you delete every, every hydrogen except for the hydrogens connected on a heteroatom, which we don't have in this situation, but we do on the right over here. We have these two hydrogens connected to that nitrogen. So 3D bond line structures um, are made using wedges and dashes. So a wedge is going to represent a group coming out of the page towards you. So that's going to be like this chlorine right here. 
if you can imagine that this zigzag form is flat on the page, um, this chlorine would be coming out at you. And then the dash represents the group going in the page behind you um, or away from you. And so that's going to be like this chlorine here. Um, and then anything, like I said, not on a wedge or a dash is in the same plane of the page. I hope you found this video to be really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what Organic Chemistry 1 class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.